My name is Lorena Bravo. I am a business owner in Allentown. I'm also a board member at Big Brothers Big Sisters. I felt that I wanted to be part of something bigger than myself. And I found that with the Allentown Art Museum, I could be part of a growing and vibrant community. My little sister and I, we get to learn about community and it's really a way for us to connect with each other, with other people, and also with the Lehigh Valley. Since the mid-1800s, the Butch family has been building in the Lehigh Valley. This long, successful story continues today with the sixth generation in line to preserve the family tradition. From covered bridges to towering buildings, the Butch family has helped build a way of life. In 1842, the first Butch builder, Solomon, built Bogert's Bridge. And now, more than 170 years later, his family continues the practice. Alvin H. Butts Incorporated has significant experience in the construction of healthcare facilities, colleges and universities, corporate office buildings, high-tech manufacturing facilities, sports and entertainment venues, government buildings, K-12 schools, and retail buildings. In 2003, Alvin H. Butts Incorporated formed the Butts family of companies, bringing in two new construction management companies, Alexander Building Construction Company and Shoemaker Construction Company, while extending their reach from Pennsylvania to New Jersey, New York, Delaware, and Maryland. The Butts family of companies is committed to constant innovation in order to provide clients with absolute quality assurance and success. By using building information modeling and lean construction techniques, Butch continues to find new solutions to building challenges. They are able to streamline processes and produce higher quality buildings while providing exceptional comprehensive construction management services. Committed, experienced, local, the Butch family of companies. This is Victaulic. From our early days to our standing as a global leader, with thousands of employees around the globe, Victaulic has designed, developed, and manufactured innovative piping solutions for the most extreme, wide-ranging, and mission-critical applications. From commercial building to oil and gas and mining, from power generation to water treatment and marine construction. Customers have been depending on Victaulic since 1919 for four simple reasons. Our heritage, our quality, our commitment, and our innovation. These are the standards that define Victaulic and allow us to engineer quality into every build. Welcome to Victaulic.
My name is Penny Holman, and I am a member of the Art Museum since about 1989. Someone suggested that I join SODA, which is a volunteer service organization of dedicated, talented women who uh, contribute much to the museum. I love the Art Museum because I feel like I'm going into the womb when I enter feels like a safe and comfortable environment. And it taught me how to think out of the box. I attribute the art museum for changing my life. And it's a jewel of a museum and uh, an amazing contribution to the community. When we talk about the value that Norris McLaughlin provides, we're really talking about the value that we provide to our clients in the form of high quality legal services that we provide in a responsive and cost effective manner. We're also talking about the value that we receive from our employees, uh, something that we appreciate and respect very much. And we're talking about the value that we provide to our community as a whole. We recognize our responsibility as a corporate citizen, and we have made an ongoing commitment to contribute to the overall welfare of our community. I think that this place really tries to focus not on wins or losses or the legal box of how can I draft this contract, how can I win this litigation, but they focus on the business needs of the client. Clients, regardless of their size, appreciate that. They appreciate uh, value in services and we're able to provide that value by uh, accomplishing our clients needs and goals uh, and that's from small companies to the very largest companies in the world. The work is spread around to the appropriate people and that we uh, staff all of our cases with the appropriate people, staff all our cases at the right level which makes economic sense for the client. Our approach is, you know, we treat every client with, we give them a personal level of care, um, level of attention to make sure we're really adequately addressing all of their needs. And when somebody comes through the store, I'm able to say, you know, whatever your, your question or your, your issue is, it's most likely we have somebody here that can help you and give you that, that personalized attention. We at Alvin H. Butts Incorporated have been supporting the Art Museum for quite some time. It's one of the most important cultural institutions in the Lehigh Valley. The Lehigh Valley is a great place to live, and one of the reasons it's such a great place to live is because of the wonderful institutions like the Allentown Art Museum. You get the opportunity to see great exhibits. You don't have to travel to New York or Philadelphia. They have exhibits, things like the Rembrandt exhibit, which uh, is amazing that you can see that in the Lehigh Valley and don't have to travel. When I was in the Allentown School District in third or fourth grade, I went on a field trip to the Allentown Art Museum, and I still remember that to this day very distinctly. So I think it's really important for individuals and corporations to support the museum as much as they can to make sure that the Allentown Art Museum can continue to thrive well into the future.
we've lived in the Lehigh Valley for about 30 years and we've enjoyed over the years the wonderful exhibits here at the museum and a lot of the educational things that they have for both adults and kids. We've always felt strongly about being involved with our community and the people in our community. Well, I've been involved in the Allentown Art Museum for the last two and a half years and uh, joined the board at that time. Not having a significant art background, one of the things I've really grown to appreciate is uh, the different local artists that are, are here and the importance that they play in the history of artwork in the Lehigh Valley. This isn't just an outstanding collection of artwork from prominent local, national, and even world-renowned artists, but it's also an art center, a cultural center, and a big part of the revitalization of, of downtown Allentown. We have been supporters of the Art Museum. Since when? 1964? Something like that. Yeah, as I recall, you started with soda in 1964, is that right? That's right, I did. And we've had more fun raising money, doing galas, and learning a lot about art and helping the museum. And it's been fun. <laughs> I started to get active, really, when I went on the board, and then uh, when I started the Crest Society. It's been a wonderful group to be with. I have more friends, I have more fun with that Crest Society. We love being here and we hope you will all support this wonderful, wonderful place. Boy, and I second that, honey. I think the Art Museum is a wonderful place to come and enjoy and, and learn things. And, and we hope people. that uh, the community supports it and continues to support it the way it has in the past. Hello and welcome to the Allentown Art Museum's 2021 Virtual Fundraising Gala, Maxing Out on Art. I'm Melanie Falcon, anchor and reporter for WFMZ. We are so excited to have you join us this evening. Tonight is all about celebrating and supporting the many initiatives the Allentown Art Museum is taking to expose and engage our community to the arts. The museum provides so many incredible events and exhibits, all while promoting essential art education and programming. Your support tonight can make a big impact on the quality and quantity of services that the Allentown Art Museum provides to our Lehigh Valley. Make sure that you get involved by bidding throughout the next hour on our art auction and our virtual paddle raise. It's really easy and you can do it right from your phone. Head over to allentownartmuseum.org or you can go directly to the bidding site aartm2021.ggo.bid. That's two A's and two G's. All you have to do once you're there is select a Get Started button to register to bid. So did you get that? I know it's kind of a long address, but here it is again, and it's also along the bottom of your screen. aartm2021.ggo.bid. Check it out. And for those of you who are hosting a watch party at your home, we thank you for your support of the Allentown Art Museum and hope that you're enjoying your party box. There are some really cool items inside, so if you haven't looked yet, you're definitely in for a treat. And a special thank you to Karen Hunter Catering for providing tonight's delicious food. So let us know what your favorite party item is. Could it be maybe one of the bottle of wine that is in there? But let us know what it is and by chatting with us on the screen here, everyone is invited to tell us your favorite museum exhibition or program over the years. And of course, don't forget social media. Please post and share your favorite moments from tonight's show. You can take a screenshot, a selfie, a group pic, or maybe even show us some art that you own that inspires you. 
Tag the Allentown Art Museum in your post on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at a Town Art Museum, and of course, use tonight's hashtag AAM Gala 2021 when you share. Now, of course, this event wouldn't be possible without our generous sponsors. Thanks to you, we're able to continue fostering creative minds and sharing the exceptional collections of meaningful artwork right here in the heart of Allentown. You're in for a real treat tonight, and we're just about to get started. So let's begin our program by hearing from someone who's devoted to teaching, informing, and educating and inspiring the community in her role as chair of the Allentown Art Museum's Board of Trustees, Michelle Stringer. Michelle? Good evening, everyone. I'm Michelle Stringer, chair of the Board of Trustees. And on behalf of the board, I'd like to welcome you to the Allentown Art Museum's 2021 Gala and Auction. I want to also express our deepest gratitude to our dedicated gala committee and talented museum staff who've made this evening possible. And to you, our many sponsors, donors, members, volunteers, and friends of the museum, thank you for joining us virtually this evening. Our annual gala is our longest running museum event and our main fundraiser of the year. It affords us a moment to both reflect and to look ahead. Through a very challenging year, together, we've kept our commitment to bring the restorative power of art to our community. And with your generous support tonight, we look forward to advancing our ongoing pursuit of equity, sustainability, and accessibility. It is now my great pleasure to introduce to you our museum leader, our president and CEO, and the inspiration for tonight's gala theme, Dr. Max Weintraub. Thank you, Michelle, and good evening, everyone. My name is Max Weintraub, and I'm the president and CEO of the Allentown Art Museum. Since its grassroots founding in 1934 by a collective of artists and civic-minded leaders, the Allentown Art Museum has aspired to be a welcoming and accessible institution that uses arts and culture to inspire, enrich, transform, and engage. I am honored and humbled to lead an organization that believes that a creative expression is a catalyst for positive change and is committed to celebrating all voices and welcoming all audiences. As the museum approaches its 90th birthday, we continue to explore ways to enhance inclusion, access, and opportunity. It's our goal to amplify voices that have historically been marginalized and disenfranchised. Tonight, you will hear about a few of our important initiatives including a fully paid internship program, which will provide opportunities for young people to gain the training and experience they need to pursue rewarding careers in the arts, and a new technology initiative, which will allow us to offer more enriching and impactful encounters with art to enhance the visitor experience. I strongly encourage you to donate to these initiatives so we can continue to serve our community and remain an inspiring, thought-provoking, and welcoming place for generations to come. As many of you know, museums have been particularly affected by the global pandemic, which is why your support is so vital. You joining us virtually tonight is a testament to how a community can band together and support the arts community. We have had over 3,000 people attend in-person exhibitions and virtual programs at the museum since the beginning of this year alone. Your ongoing support ensures that we can continue our groundbreaking exhibitions, exceptional educational programming, and continue to be an arts institution at the center of civic life in the Lehigh Valley community. That was the promise upon which the Allentown Art Museum was founded 87 years ago by the artist and educator Walter Emerson Baum. With your help, that promise will remain the core of our mission for the next 87 years and beyond. I sincerely encourage you to register to bid in tonight's program to help us build towards this exciting future. It's so easy to register and join in on the fun, so please do. We have a lot in store for you tonight and we're excited to get started. Let's kick things off by taking a virtual tour of the space here at the Allentown Art Museum. Thank you very much and enjoy the program.
Wow, what an amazing place we have here. The permanent galleries with art from all over the world, including art from right in our own backyard. Spaces for special exhibitions, the Crayola classroom for family art making, the fabulous museum store with unique and stylish items all for you to explore. And now I am thrilled to introduce our co-host for the evening, the Allentown Art Museum's new president and CEO, Max Weintraub. Max, welcome and thank you for being here tonight. Thanks, Mel. I'm so excited to be here hosting this event with you tonight, my very first gala. <laughs> we are coming to you live from the museum's Trexler Gallery, the home of our exceptional American art collection. The artwork in here and throughout the museum really is amazing. I've gotten a little sneak tour tonight, which has been really neat. And right now we're actually just down the hall from a painting by Rembrandt. I hadn't actually seen that in person yet. And it's just stunning and incredible what you guys did to that work of art. It is amazing. I know that many of you know the story behind the reattribution of our amazing Rembrandt painting. But for those of you out there who haven't seen it yet, our historic exhibition, Rembrandt Revealed, will be up through next weekend. So there's still time to stop in and see the Lehigh Valley's very own painting by the great Dutch master. I'd also like to take a moment to say a special thank you to our gala sponsors for this evening. Because of your support, the Allentown Art Museum can continue to provide meaningful experiences with art to everyone in our valley. At our President's Circle level, we thank Alvin H. Butts Incorporated, Cornerstone Asset Management, Joint Gifts by Crayola and Michelle and Rick Stringer, and Norris McLaughlin and Dolores Laputka, along with Victolic. A big thank you to these and to all of our sponsors. You have contributed greatly to the success of our event this evening during these extraordinary times. We appreciate all of your support, and you at home right now can help support the Allentown Art Museum as well. Here's how. Register to participate in our auction. Go to allentownartmuseum.org, or even quicker, it's that long, long address again, aartm 2021.ggo.bid. Select the Get Started button to register so that you don't miss out on the amazing items that we have up for bid tonight. Our Fund to Need paddle raise is coming up shortly, and we also have some exceptional museum quality artworks coming up for auction soon that you could own by the end of this evening. But first, let's start things off by auctioning off our non-art items. Yes, and a special thanks to our donors for these items. We have some really unique pieces for you tonight. We'll introduce them now, and then the bidding will stay open for the next half hour or so. So make sure that you stay tuned until the end of the show when we announce the winners. So first up, we have an artful dinner for eight. This item is valued at $800, and we started the bidding at $400. This item includes a lovely dinner at the home of Sandy and Pat Belden, where they will share the stories behind the interesting pieces in their home and serve some wines inspired by the art and the destinations where they were found. Thank you so much, Sandy and Pat, for generously opening your home in support of the museum. Our opening bid for this experience was the very first bid we received in the auction on Wednesday morning. Thank you to Lorena Bravo for starting us off. Absolutely, and we've had several bids come in since then. Um, first, we had a print merchant outbid Lorena Bravo, and then Lorena got back in on it, and she bid again. But right now in the top spot, Miss Judith A. Harris has a bid of $800. So can you match Judith Harris? Get those bids in now, and again, the bids on this item will be open until close to the end of our gala tonight. Yeah, it's a little bit of a bidding war. And, you know, Sandy and Pat are just longtime friends of the Allentown Art Museum. Sandy was a longtime trustee for 18 years, I think eight of which he was, seven of which he was board president. Wow. Pat's a longtime member of SOTA. So they've really been longtime supporters and friends of the museum, and we really appreciate them donating this item to us. Yeah, it is, sounds like such a unique opportunity, and it seems like they have a really cool realm of art collections and just all different styles of art in their house. Yeah, I mean, one of the, the, the joys of what we do is being able to see private collections. Mm -hmm. And this is a wonderful opportunity to see someone, you know, someone's collection go into their home. Right. Sandy and Pat have works by Toshika Takezu, which we have in the permanent collection here at the museum. 
Jack Savitsky work, which we also have in the collection. And they have a collecting philosophy that I think is really wonderful. They say that, quote, one does not need a fortune to live with beautiful things. Each item is all the more valuable to us because we discovered it on our own. And I think that that collecting philosophy is so wonderful. And I think that you know, spending an evening with them and their collection is going to be really special. Absolutely. Sounds so, so neat and a really unique experience for anybody out there. So again, right now, I believe $800 is what the bid is up to, and that bid will stay open for a little while. But in the meantime, let's move along to our next item, which is a stunning 80-inch Akoya saltwater pearl necklace with an antique 14-karat dog clip fitting. This item is valued at $3,500, so let's start the bidding at $900. And let's also give a special shout out to Roy Rover Jewelry and Antiques in Hellertown, Pennsylvania for donating this one-of-a-kind item. I actually had a chance to see it here in the museum a little while ago, and it's just a stunning necklace. It's a beautiful piece. It's one long, continuous string, so it can be worn a number of different ways. It's really exquisite. And we have a little bit of a bidding war on these pearls as well, which is really great to see. Uh, they, they've been here in the museum for the last couple days, and they are just really gorgeous. The, begin the bidding on these items will continue for a little while longer, however, so you still have time to get in there. And these pearls, you know, this is a non-art item as we've talked about, but, right. but really pearls have been part of the history of art for a long, long time. Even our Rembrandt painting, pearls are featured in the young woman in that painting. So pearls have been around in art and in paintings for a long time. So this is a wonderful opportunity to own this stunning strand of Akoya pearls. It is absolutely beautiful. And it looks like you said, there is that bidding war going on right now between Ruth Turok and Greg Butts. So they're going back and forth here. It's up to $1,200 right now. But again, there is still time. We'll have to see if this bidding war between these two continues. Yep, and you can bid on these items right now. It'll stay open for a little while longer. But now I'd like to introduce the first two artworks up for bid tonight in our auction by two incredible artists. You will meet them and our other participating artists shortly in a video, but let's take a look now at their works. Up first is this incredible sculptural wall piece by the Denver-based artist Derek Velasquez. Let's start the bidding on this work at $1,800. This beautiful work measures about two foot by two foot, so it's a perfect size for someone's home. And it's made from hand cut individual strips of marine vinyl that are meticulously stacked and accumulated onto a pre-cut wooden form. I've known and worked with Derek on a number of projects over the past 10 years or so. And he is an immensely talented artist who uses common construction materials and elements to place his sculptures and installations in conversation with everyday architecture and design. Derek's signature vinyl wall sculpture, like the one that you see before you, elevates materials commonly used for book binding and upholstery into vibrant multi-layered stacks that are experiments in gravity and color. Derek is a major presence in Denver's robust contemporary art scene. And he's also a tireless advocate for other artists in Colorado and beyond supporting his peers through initiatives like his Yes Ma'am Projects grant program and his new Friend of a Friend project space, which provides exhibition opportunities for emerging artists in Denver. Very neat indeed. And it looks like we do have that $1,800 bid that is in already. Abby Riley, thank you so much for your bid. And if anybody wants to outbid Abby, now is your chance. And it will be open throughout the rest of our program as well. And it's such a neat piece. I got to see this here in the gallery as well. And you were saying marine vinyl. So it's essentially what boat seats would be made out of, like the cushioning, the cover of it, right? Absolutely. Derek uses sort of everyday commercial and industrial materials. And so the vinyl can be found on boat seats, maybe even a diner, the booth uh, vinyl that you might find in a oh. diner. And so he really likes using everyday materials. He's a book binder himself. So I think that's how he got into oh. using these different strips. And, you know, for those of you who are thinking about maybe bidding on this and or bidding on one of these items and starting your collection or maybe sort of rounding out your collection, I'll just tell you, I mean, one, one thing that's really important is to think about a collecting philosophy like we were talking about with Sandy and Pat. Mm -hmm. But also when, I, when I'm collecting items or when I'm thinking about an artist and an artwork, I look for a couple specific things. And so I look at, you know, their, their exhibition history, what collections they're in, 
what awards and, and different honors that the artist might have gotten. So think of Derek Velasquez for a second. He's the recipient of the Joan Mitchell Grant for Painters and Sculptors, which is a very prestigious <laughs> grant. He's a Mass MoCA artist resident, which is a great contemporary art space in North Adams, Massachusetts. He's also a McDowell Colony Fellow. So he's, he's received really prestigious awards and honors. He's had solo shows at the Museum of Contemporary Art in Denver, which is an amazing contemporary art museum. He's had shows around the country, Pearlstein Gallery at Drexel University nearby. He's had solo booths at Volta New York Art Fair. If anyone knows that art fair, it's one of the big annual art fairs in New York. He's had a solo show at the Boulder Museum of Contemporary Art. So it's important to look at the history and, and Derek and a bunch of the other artists we have today have been exhibited in, in really major exhibitions. He's in the public collections of Miami University of Ohio, Temple University, Wellington Management LLC, Fidelity, Fidelity Investments Headquarters. So he's in really important corporate and, commercial and uh, public collections. He's had really robust exhibition histories. These are all really important things to consider when buying a wonderful work like this. Absolutely, it's so neat that it could be in your home now as well. Yeah, and this is very, you know, it's, it's really a sculpture. It's a wall piece, but you know, mm -hmm. it comes off the wall a couple inches. It has great texture. It just has incredible presence. Yeah, it absolutely does. And again, the bid right now is at $1,800. And don't forget that the bidding on all of these items will stay open until the end of tonight's show. So please continue to bid high and stay tuned to hear all of the winners. All the proceeds tonight go towards the museum. So we are grateful for your generosity and your support. And let's move on now to our next artwork up for auction by Lydia Panis with her gorgeous print titled Kumquats and Kiwi Berries. Let's start the bidding out at, on this at $2,000 and we already have a bid at that $2,000 there from Nancy Odorsky. Thank you so much, Nancy, and we'll see if anybody wants to outbid her now. Yeah, that's wonderful, Nancy. Thank you so much for supporting us. Lydia is a visual artist working with photography and video. I had the pleasure of meeting her just a few months ago. But she had a very well received solo show of her photos here at the Allentown Art Museum in 2012. She is a first generation American who was raised between Greece and the United States. And all of her work is made in the fields, forests and studio on her 70 acre farm in rural eastern Pennsylvania. So not too far from here. Not too far. She's in our backyard and both Lydia and Derek are fantastic artists who I admire greatly and we'll hear from them ab about their work and experience in a few moments. Mm -hmm. But I encourage you to take this opportunity to own one of these amazing pieces. That's right, now is your chance. Again, the bidding right now is at $2,000. And this is such a neat photograph. So tell me a little bit, Max, about how she took this photograph and staged it. Yeah, well, she stages all of her works, as I mentioned, on her property. And still life, she'll take fruit and different berries and she'll basically throw them into these various arrangements. Mm -hmm. She shoots them right there in her studio. And she's really tapping into a long time honored tradition of the still life that goes back to the old master painters and beyond, some of which we have in our Baroque and Renaissance uh, gallery just a few steps away. And you know, still lifes like this, you can see, I mean, it's about abundance and beauty, but there's also mm -hmm. often a melancholy side to it where you have this kind of meditation on the ephemerality of life and of the, the fruits that are in the photograph. And you can just see through her color palette, through the, the elements that she uses and her really brilliant photography, just how beautiful this piece is. It's a large, it's a large photograph. It's about 40 inches on a mm -hmm. side. It's really, it would be a statement piece in anyone's uh, living room or anywhere in their home. It's really exquisite. Absolutely. And she had it beautifully framed for it's us a, as well. It's gorgeous. It's really, if you hadn't, if you didn't see it in person, it'll still be up tomorrow. You can come see it, but you can bin on it now. It's an incredible piece. And as I was mentioning before, looking at exhibition history, looking at the permanent collections, mm -hmm. Lydia has this in abundance. She's, she's in, been in group shows at the Brooklyn Museum. She has a solo show coming up at the Bailey Contemporary Arts Center in Pomp Pompano Beach, Florida. And listen to some of these prestigious collections that her work is in their permanent collection. The Brooklyn Museum, 
the Museum of Fine Arts Houston, the Bronx Museum, the Museum of Contemporary Photography in Chicago, the Museum of Photographic Arts in San Diego. So you could own this piece and have it in your collection, the same piece that's at the Palm, Spr the same artist who has work in the Palm Springs Art Museum, the Sheldon Museum of Art in Nebraska, and even our very own Allentown Art Museum. Her work is in our permanent collection. So this is a wonderful opportunity to own a work by Lydia Panas, a local artist, but she's really exhibited around the world. It's a really special object. Absolutely, it's such a neat photograph there and it can be yours tonight. So again, these four auction items will stay open for bids until the end of tonight's show, but bid now and bid high to make sure that you're the winner. But before we continue with the rest of our art items, let's take a quick break and we can enjoy this video showcasing some of the many events and programs that the Allentown Art Museum has hosted in recent past. We've had so many inspiring and educational events and programs here at the museum over the years, and I'm really excited about our lineup of virtual and in-person programming that we have in store for you later this spring and summer. I urge everyone to visit allentownartmuseum.org and sign up to receive our weekly email to stay up on all the happenings we have going on at the museum. I love the art museum's programs and events, and I know that all of you out there joining us tonight do too. You value what it brings to our community, so please take a few minutes now and tell us why you love the museum on social media. You can use our hashtag, again, that's AAMGala2021. So let us know all of those and share your support of the museum online. And we want you to share your support also in this way for the important work that the Allentown Art Museum brings to the Lehigh Valley with our Fund a Need Paddle Raise. So who's ready to start bidding? That's right, we have two exciting new initiatives to tell you about tonight that are near and dear to my heart, and we'd love for you to support and help make happen. Let's take a look at each one. At the Allentown Art Museum, it's our goal to provide a stimulating environment with new technologies to create more impactful, engaging, and interactive experiences for our members and visitors. Incorporating state-of-the-art audio and video tools will enable visitors to enjoy watching art videos while having greater access to more in-depth learning through monitors, iPads, or audio tours incorporated into our exhibits. The development of hands-on art and science-focused maker stations in our Artways Interactive Family Gallery, including such tools as a 3D printer and video equipment, will enable children to create, examine, and experiment with technology in fun and educational ways. The addition of these new interactive capabilities will allow our visitors to move beyond just looking at artworks in our exhibits, but to actively participating and choosing the information they want to see, hear, and read about. Just imagine the possibilities for greater engagement, greater learning, and fun. Our staff plays a key role in educating the next generation of art museum professionals by mentoring our interns. Our recent Kutztown University intern, Sophia Yaniger, reflected on her internship by saying, the freedom to pursue my interests while learning meaningful skills and obtaining real field experience were incredibly valuable, and it was an important step forward in my academic journey. It is the museum's goal to now offer paid internships, as interns play a vital role in the work that goes on in the museum. 
Nicole Mangold, a recent intern and now full-time staff member at the museum said, during my internship, I worked two part-time jobs. If I had an option for a paid internship, it would have lifted a burden from my shoulders and allowed me to spend more time and energy on creating great programs at the museum. By offering paid internships, the museum will be able to make positive changes in our community and create a more equitable place to expand access and lower barriers. Just imagine the possibilities for the future of young art professionals. Wow, both of these initiatives sound incredible. The new technologies the museum would like to implement can offer amazing new experiences, and that internship program can provide important hands-on experience to young adults. Investments in paid internships and new technology will allow us to continue to serve our community in meaningful ways moving forward. Throughout our paddle raise, we're going to open up each level from the highest to lowest and talk about both technology and internships at that level. Let's first begin our paddle raise by opening up our top level of $5,000 for the technology fund. At this level, the museum will be able to purchase a state-of-the-art HD projector and monitors so that we can consistently display the important medium of video and digital art in our permanent collection galleries and temporary exhibitions. This will ensure that we are able to continue offering visitors outstanding contemporary art in all media. Plus, your, su your support for technology at this level will allow us to enhance and transform that visitor experience through engaging, interactive programming, and by offering new technology-driven ways for our audiences to interact with the museum's collection and exhibitions. Wow, I am thrilled to announce that we actually have two pairs of momentum bidders who have generously donated $5,000 toward the purchase of these items. Amazing. Yes, it really is. We have Francie Bishop Good and David Horvitz, also Sue and Bob Godomsky. Thank you guys so much for your pledges there. So who will match their donation and enable the museum to purchase more HD monitors, wireless headphones, and other tech tools to enhance future exhibits? We hope that it'll be you. Thank you so much, Francie and David and Sue and Bob. New technology is so important to what we do here at the museum, but let's also open up the paddle raise on our other initiative, which supports our efforts to fund a paid internship program here at the Allentown Art Museum. We'll start that, this internship paddle raise at the $5,000 giving level as well. A donation at this amount will enable us to fund a six-month fellowship at the museum for a college-age individual or a grad student. That's six months of immersive experience and the development of important skill sets. Professional internships offer valuable career and working experiences to college and graduate students. Having a program that offers a stipend when it will enable students from a diverse range of socioeconomic backgrounds to take advantage of this wonderful learning opportunity. That's right, Melanie. Paid internships play such a critical role in diversifying the museum field. And with your support, we can lead by example with a fully funded program model. I am very pleased to announce that Val Johnson and Pat Farrell have generously pledged $5,000 towards one student to take advantage of a six-month fellowship at the museum. Thank you so much, Val and Pat. Who will match their donation and enable more learning opportunities through a six-month fellowship at the museum moving forward? Our efforts to ensure that interns receive a reasonable stipend will allow people who might not otherwise be able to afford to accept an internship the ability to do so. Our actions today to pay interns helps to transfer power, resources, and dignity to the next generation. That absolutely does. So let's move on now to our next giving level of $2,500. First, for the technology fund, and with the donation of that amount, the museum will be able to create a new hands-on art maker station for our Artways Interactive Family Gallery. How cool is that? These maker stations allow hands-on learning to take place right at the intersection of art and science so that kids of all ages can learn about art conservation, 3D modeling, video development, and so much more. 
These stations and 3D printers will give children the opportunity to create works of art while learning, exploring, and experimenting with technology in exciting and fun new ways. That's right. I actually have two kids of my own at home, so I think that they would love coming here and checking out these maker stations. Indeed. It really is an important initiative to our community. Thank you to Greg Butz and also to Nancy and Tony Odorsky, who have both donated $2,500 towards the development of a new children's art and science focus maker station. We greatly appreciate your support and your generosity. So who will match these gifts and enable the museum to offer more educational maker stations to children in art ways? My boys will thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much for giving at that level. If anyone else can, we would be so appreciated. But let's go to the $2,500 giving level for the internship fund. With a generous donation at this amount, the museum will be able to fund one summer internship for a high school or college age student. Thank you so much to Michelle and Rick Stringer who have donated $2,500 to support this program. Okay. Internships are so important to providing those hands-on experiences for young people interested in learning about museums. Amy and Tom Scalisi and Heather Rodale have also donated $2,500 for this internship program and new technology. That is so wonderful. So who will match them and enable more students to participate in a summer internship that will provide them with career building experiences? Yeah, these internships can make a real impact in young lives and ensure a diversity of voices for years to come. Let's now move back to the technology fund. A shout out to Jill and Al Douglas for donating $1,500 towards our technology fund. And thank you to Terry and Walt Johnson, who have donated $1,000 to help the museum develop informational and educational videos, and also to purchase HD video monitors and other tech so we can continue to offer exciting live and virtual programming to our members and to the entire community. This past year has shown just how important virtual learning opportunities can be. Who else will support us at the $1,000 giving level? We need your help tonight so the museum can continue to provide wonderful and impactful experiences like these and more both inside and outside the museum. And let's move along now to our final giving level for our internship fund. That's $1,000. With a donation of $1,000, the museum will be able to fund a high school or college student to assist staff with the Sunday afternoon children and family art ventures program for a semester. So please support this wonderful program and enable several students to experience this great learning opportunity and to have fun working with children and families too. We have momentum bidders at the 1,000 level that we'd like to, th to acknowledge and thank. Thank you so much to our Jana and Jeff Etchison, Jill and Al Douglas, and also to SOTA, the Society of the Arts, for their support of our paid internship program. And we also have a donation of $100 from Marilyn for our internship fund. So thank you so much, Marilyn. Incredible. What an incredible outpouring of support. I love seeing these names come in this oh, evening. It's really inspiring, Melanie. We also have a $500 donation to our technology fund from Marlene Ambrosio, in addition to donations from Judy Savchek and AAM Auxiliary, which will support the purchase of an iPad or an audio tour app that provides visitors with a richer, more immersive museum experience, including more in-depth information about the artwork and exhibitions. Please keep bidding to help us purchase these wonderful tools so that we can provide a more enriching, state-of-the-art learning experience to more people. With a donation of $250 or $100 to our technology fund, the museum can develop new virtual children's art programs to offer to K through 12 schools in our community. In today's virtual teaching environment, having access to a variety of high quality educational materials has really been crucial to teachers. We'd like to acknowledge Martin and Marsha Hyman for their great donation of $250 to each of our initiatives for a total of $500. Thank you so much. Another thank you to Daniel Wilson and Carol Shiner Wilson for their $250 donation as well. Thank you all. 
It all adds up and your generosity and support is critical to providing innovative and experiential learning opportunities to the teachers and children and families of our community. Absolutely, Max. And it looks like we also have some more donors for our Fund a Need initiative to a shout out right now. Thank you so much to Dan Wells, Jessica Roosh, and Maureen Fernbacher for your donations. So many incredible initiatives to support. It really is hard to choose just one. I couldn't agree more. There are some incredible programs that the Allentown Art Museum is fostering for our community. I'm honored to be a part of it and excited to see our audience support their favorite ones. So please donate if you can. There is no amount too small when it comes to these important initiatives. We are so proud of the amount we've raised tonight so far. Thank you all so much for donating to our funds. Yeah, look at the progress on the thermometer there. We've watched it go up throughout the evening, which Amazing. is just incredible. So thank you to everyone who participated. Your generosity is inspiring and greatly appreciated. And don't forget, you can continue to donate to our fund and need initiatives until 11.59 p.m. on Monday, April 26th. So if you haven't participated yet, there is still time to support one of these wonderful and worthy programs. And you can also tell your friends about it if there's somebody who wasn't able to be on tonight or if you're feeling particularly inspired after watching our programming, gather your friends, tell them all that they have until Monday to donate. For sure. That whatever you give, again, is greatly appreciated. And before we move on to the second part of the art auction, let's take a look at all the incredible artists who are featured this year. Hi, my name is Derek Velasquez. I'm an artist in Denver, Colorado, and um, I'm giving you a bit of a sneak peek into my studio just so you can begin to see how these are made and how they begin to formulate on the wall. Um, they're made of upholstery vinyl, so it's a material that is meant to be sat on and related to the body. Now, when I make these pieces, they, they slump like a body would. Like, imagine your body in repose after a long day laying on the couch. And I want to use that gravity, the gravity that exists in our body, um, and show kind of an accumulation of a material and um, denying a surface that is normally meant to be the surface you would sit on and exposing a new surface um, by cutting the material and stacking it and layering it on top of each other. What I found is as they began to accumulate, uh, I could use all these different colors to create gradients um, or uh, contrasting colors. And that is something that um, I hope you can see in these works. I'm Lydia Panis, and I'm an artist working in photography and video. My work explores identity and the questions of who we are and what we want to become. I'm mostly known for my portraiture, but I also make work in the landscape and still life. The photograph in the auction is from a new body of work that I made this last year that explores the pleasures of transformation and personal change. These new works are less formal than my older work. They're more playful, they're more colorful, and they contain unusual juxtapositions. Welcome to Isabella. The series of paintings are inspired by dance movements. You can really feel it here. <laughs> um, when I look at Isabella, I get a little bit of an oceanic feel. My work treads between uh, looking towards nature and really just being in the moment and seeing what arises. I hope you enjoy it. Hi, I'm Scott Shirk. Welcome to my studio. I began making all sorts of recordings, sounds of things, trying to make spaces, which brings us to the sculpture Trixel Game Preserve. It's a work that has actually three components to it. It has a, a sculpture, it has a drawing, and it has sound. The sculpture originated with walks that I was taking in the Trexler Nature Preserve, but I stopped and made recordings of every everything that was interesting, that was fascinating to me, and that somehow reflected the space. The sculpture is the trajectory of my walk. Along with that goes a drawing, 
which is digitally printed on the transparency, which describes the ambient sound that was going on at the time, as well as gives a good map and description of where I was going. And then along with that, what you're hearing in the background is the sound that I recorded. It's about a 40-minute CD edited down of the sounds from the morning through the dawn chorus onward through the day. The inspiration for my paintings, I think, is what's around me. And um, that can be something I see when I'm taking a walk. It can be something out from outside my window. I'm very inspired by the field and the ridge um, behind my studio. It can be um, a memory that I want to lock. So this is some of the preliminary studies I was doing. Memory is pretty important to me. I have a really bad memory and um, I find by painting I it sort of locks the memory in. So painting is kind of my memory palace. But I think I come to it because I'm really interested in exploring the color yellow and um, I don't want to just explore the color yellow without it having a connection to something. Glass is material. I love, I've always loved it. I like the fact that it drinks light. It, it absorbs light, it reflects, it refracts. It, with color, it's like watercolor paint. It's transparent, it can be opaque. The goals for Kayla Back is keep getting interesting, challenging projects that we actually can do. Try to keep it moving forward economically and uh, keep, keep rolling toward new ideas and creativity all the time. My name is Kay Walking Stick. I think of our beautiful America as a, a gorgeous place to live, that we are very fortunate to live in this absolutely beautiful country. And I like to travel around and look at places and make drawings and make photographs and then come home to my home on the Delaware and make paintings of it. The painting itself is done primarily from memory, even though I always go to the place and photograph it myself and draw it myself. It is imprinted in the head. I think that we have to honor the beauty of our country. I think that we are so fortunate to have it and it is so very threatened. Uh, so we have to find ways to honor that beauty and to hold on to this beautiful environment we have. What amazing talent we have here tonight. Thank you, Derek, Lydia, Scott, Danielle, Pat, Will, and Kay for sharing your work with us. I am truly humbled by your willingness to donate works to support the museum. And thank you too to Garvey Simon Gallery in New York for working with us to secure Danielle's painting and to Pentimenti Gallery in Philadelphia for helping secure Derek's work. Your support is very much appreciated. Now we already have some bids on Derek and Lydia's works from the first part of our auction. So let's check in now to see where we are with that. First up, we're going to check in on Derek's piece, and it looks like the bidding is up to $2,000 on that. Thank you to Teresa Johnson for her bid there on that piece. That's very exciting. Let's check in now on the piece by Lydia Panis. That Nancy Odorsky, she still has the top bid at $2,000 on that beautiful still life photograph. Sounds like an opportunity there for someone with Lydia's work. It sure does. And check this out. We're checking in on the Artful Dinner for eight now, and we've got quite the bidding war going on here now. Um, Miss Judith Harris there is in the top spot with a bid of $1,200, but this is certainly a hot item. Everybody wants to go there and have dinner and look at that private art collection. Yeah, same with the Strand of Okoya Pearls. We have a number of bids on this item. Ruth Turok holds the top bid right now. 
That's right. Her seventeen hundred dollars. Yeah, the value is thirty five hundred dollars. So it's still practically a steal at this point. We'll still have to see if this bargain. bidding war keeps going on. And just remember, everything that you donate on these through these bids goes directly to help us here at the Allentown Art Museum. It's really incredible. And so the bidding on those works and the other non-art items will continue for a little while longer. Mm -hmm. But up for bid now is Danielle Reedy's painting, Isabella. This artwork is inspired by dance movement and is a beautiful oil and plaster on canvas. Let's, we started the bid at $1,800 for this item. This bidding will end in the next few minutes, so get your bids in now and don't miss out on this amazing piece. We're already up to $3,000, Laura Hertz's bid on that. So keep bidding, it'll close in just a few minutes. Now let me tell you a little bit about Danielle. She studied at the famous Kunstakademie Dusseldorf with the renowned artist Daniel Buren. Danielle is an esteemed and beloved professor at Indiana University's prestigious Heron School of Art and Design. She is a friend and former colleague of mine as well. In fact, in 2018, we took a group of undergrad and grad art and art history students to London together, which was definitely a bonding experience for the two of us. Right, that had to have been fun. How many students did you guys take? It was about 20, many of them going on to the subway for the first time in their <laughs> lives. It was pretty amazing. Absolutely, it is amazing, just like her artwork. It is so beautiful. I wish I could take it home with me, but one lucky bidder tonight will have that privilege. Again, the bidding right now is up to $3,000, and this will close live. So once we're done talking about this in about two or three minutes, that is going to be it. So if you want to bid on this piece by Danielle Reedy, bid right now. Yeah, we have had action on this, on this, sorry to cut you off there, Melanie. We have Laura Hertz still holding strong at $3,000. Right. Greg Butts, I know you were in there at one point. Ted Lyons as well. Uh, Sasha Weintraub. Now, any relation there, Max? That is my brother. He's All sitting right. down in Charlotte, North Carolina, hopefully watching with my three nieces. Oh, very cool. Hopefully he's watching and seeing that he got outbid, I, and maybe he'll have to come in and put another bid in on there. I know he's been aspiring to build out his art collection, trying to compete with me. So, Sash, <laughs> if you're watching, you've been outbid. It's time to get back in. It is an absolutely gorgeous piece. Tell us a little bit about her process with this piece and some of her accolades. Yeah, well, as you can see, there's not a hard edge in sight, right? And right. all of these motions are basically transfers of her hand motions mm -hmm. being represented onto the canvas. So she gestures through her dance-like movements, through her professional dance mm. training. And you can really see it when you look at the piece on your screens. You can really see the hand motions mm -hmm. of these various colors. It's really a beautiful, dynamic painting when you're standing in front of it. Incredible texture. It's a large piece. It's really lovely. Danielle, just so you know, just this past fall, she had a solo show at the Center for Contemporary Art in Perpignan, France. Wow. So she's been exhibiting internationally. She's in the Contemporary Art Museum collections of two different French museums. She's had solo shows at the Indianapolis Museum of Contemporary Art, University of Virginia Art Galleries, Garvey Simon Gallery in New York, Virginia Commonwealth University Art Galleries. She's had group shows around the world. She's been in shows in Scotland, Mexico City, Cologne, Germany, as well as at the Dallas Museum of Art, the Indianapolis Museum of Art. She's had shows in such major museums. You too can own a piece of, of her work. This is an incredible opportunity. She's exhibited in Athens, Greece, the Delaware Center for Contemporary Art. Wow. It's really amazing. It really is. And you know what else is amazing? Your brother, he's watching. He's listening because he just put in another bid. Sasha All right, Sasha. Weintraub, <laughs> stepping it up. There you go. Again, this is going to close live. So if you would like to outbid Sasha or anybody else who's up on there, do so right now. We will be closing this momentarily. Again, this gorgeous Isabella Reed, uh, Danielle Reedy piece titled Isabella. And Isabella is actually the name of her daughter. Just a little inside oh. information there. And Sasha is still the top bidder. Yeah. So please, people help me out. I need my brother <laughs> to be outbid here. I like this brotherly love that's going on here tonight. So there you go. There you Hopefully go. my nie one of my nieces is really pushing Sasha to bid. I hope you have someone that's pushing you to bid. 
Let's jump on in either in Danielle's piece, which we just have a few moments more to bid on, and then we'll move on to some other really great artwork. All right, we are wrapping up Danielle Reedy's. Remember, when these close, they are done. The bidding will be over. So let's close it out, going once, going twice on Danielle Reedy's Isabella, a wonderful painting from 2019. Fair warning, and the piece is sold. Thank you so much. We'll announce the winner very shortly. Yes, fantastic. What a lucky bidder. Up next, we have Scott Shirk's sculpture, Trexler Game Preserve Elk Trail. We will start the bidding on this piece at $2,000. This mixed media work was inspired by Scott's trips to the Trexler Game Preserve. For this piece, Scott mapped the trajectory of each of his walks and then created this fascinating work that recreates the experience of those wa walks through image and sound. Scott is a former professor, some of you may know, at Muhlenberg College, who often works with sound. He has also hosted radio shows, most recently The Blend on WDIY, and his mixed media work was included in the Allentown Art Museum group exhibition, Past Present, in 2015, which uh, was a show that established a visual dialogue between seven contemporary artists and select masterworks from our Samuel H. Kress collection. That's right. So bid now. The bidding is open and it is at $2,000 right now. We have Greg Butts at this point uh, bidding $2,000. So do you want to outbid him? This is really a neat and dynamic sculpture and piece because it includes more than just that. The sounds, we can actually hear them here in the gallery tonight. And it's neat. We keep being like, oh, is that a goose? That's <laughs> and right. that's all the sound he recorded on his walks there, right? Yeah, so these are field recordings that are an element it's the sound element of this piece, are field recordings from his walks. He's really presenting this experience of walking in these spaces and in these places in all of these different media. So we have graphic and data information. You have this beautiful lines of this welded steel piece. Mm -hmm. And additionally, you have a sound element. So it's playing just nearby and we can hear the birds chirping geese flying overhead. You hear the sounds of his walk. It's this dynamic way of representing experience in tangible, inhabitable ways. Absolutely. And Max, I know that you're new to the Lehigh Valley, but have you had a chance to go to the Trexler Game Preserve yet? I believe I had. Yeah, awesome. I have. Yeah, I've walked through a number of these spaces. I have a I just became a new dog owner, so I've taken my dog to a lot of these spaces, and the Trexler Game Preserve is one of them. It's a beautiful space, and I'm really thrilled about all the open spaces that we have around here. Yeah, we really do, and it's so neat to be so inspired by nature, which is what Scott certainly seems to be. Yeah, he loves nature. His work has been exhibited nationally and internationally. He often focuses on sound. His work has been included in exhibitions at the Katona Museum of Art, the Delaware Center for Contemporary Art, the Brooklyn Museum, the Albright Knox Gallery, which is an incredible museum up in Buffalo, New York, Southern Alberta Art Gallery in Alberta, Canada. It's really amazing. I mean, all of these artists have such great exhibition histories. They're in really incredible uh, collections. Scott's been an artist in residence at the prestigious American Academy in Rome, and he's been the recipient of numerous other grants, awards, and honors. He's really incredible. His, his work is in the permanent collection of the Mint Museum of Craft and Design, which is just minutes away from where my brother lives. So Sasha, oh. if you're interested in bidding, this is your opportunity. It's, it's a work that can be also in your collection. It's in the collection of the Mint Museum in Charlotte, North Carolina. Absolutely, and the sculpture on it, it's, it's metal. Is that right? I'm not sure what type of metal it is. I think it's welded steel, if, welded I'm, steel. if I'm not okay. incorrect. Yep, and there's aluminum involved, and of course you have the sound element and the digital print on the transparency. Yeah. I'll also have to give a shout out to Scott. He went to Haverford College, which was also my alma mater. <laughs> so I'm really thrilled to have a Haverfordian here <laughs> represented. And please, you're running out of time to bid on this item. We have to wrap it up pretty soon. Greg Butts is still our top bidder at $2,000. If anyone wants it, you are running out of time. And here we go, going once, going twice on Scott's dynamic Trexler Game Park Preserve and sold. 
The winner for this Trexler Game Preserve Elk Trail piece will be announced in a few minutes as well. Yes, thank you so much for your generosity in bidding on all of our live auction items. We still have a few left right now. Moving on to our next artist, Pat Bat. Let's take a look at her painting, September in July. And let's start the bidding at $1,800. Pat's work is also inspired by location, filtered through experience and sensibility, just like Scott. This work was inspired by Pat's surroundings in the Lehigh Valley and is a beautiful painting on wood panel from 2016. Pat was also in that AAM group exhibition I mentioned past present in 2015 and the opening for which I actually attended. It was my first oh, wow. time coming to the Allentown Art Museum. And I actually remember, I don't know if anyone out there was at that reception, but there was a driving snowstorm that night. And I was living in New York at the time where I'm from. And I remember coming in and just thinking, no one's gonna be at this reception. There's about a foot of snow on the ground. The, the bus is coming from New York. I think I was on the only one that made it. And I walked into the Allentown Art Museum and the place was packed. The wow. opening reception for that exhibition was packed in spite of the inclement weather, in spite of the highways being shut down. And I actually remember thinking then how impressive it was, how supported the museum is by the local community, which is really an incredible thing. That's right, not even a foot of snow can stop our Lehigh Valley residents from coming out and checking out beautiful art and a big opening like you're at. And that's so neat that you actually have been to the Lehigh Valley Art Museum several times before you ended up being the president and CEO. Absolutely, it made it a lot easier to, to make the decision to come here. I'm so pleased to be with you and so excited for the future of this museum. We're really excited and you're all helping us tonight to start to forge that path in the future. So we're really excited. Let me tell you a little bit about Pat. She has exhibited all around the world as well. This is a common theme with our artists tonight. These are really top artists. These are really incredible, special works of art. She's exhibited in Belgium, in Japan, Los Angeles, and places in between. Her work has been shown at the Painting Center in New York City, the Williams Center Gallery at Lafayette, Lehigh Art art galleries, a Toronto castle in a Toronto, Italy, the Center for Icelandic Art in Reykjavik, Iceland. How wow. incredible is that? that is the Hunterdon amazing. Art Museum. Her work is included in the collections at the Ameri American Embassy in Riga, Latvia, oh. and Ruth Hughes collection of artist books at Oberlin College. I believe Pat is also an art, a bookmaker, which is incredible. She's in the collections of Bryn Mawr College, where I've received my PhD. So I know we have some martyrs out there as well. <laughs> Pat's work is in their collection. She's also in the collections of the University of Tel Tennessee Art Galleries and the Allentown Art Museum's own collection. Pat has said about her work, she said, quote, my work is involved in finding coded representations of moments that reconstruct as memory. I am interested in recording and making visual the quiet, overlooked events that make up daily routine. And I think here, this September and July, it sounds so peaceful and beautiful. Just that title alone, let alone when you look at the colors, it's really an incredible piece. It is, and the more I stood and looked at it earlier, the more new colors I would see kind of almost appear. Now they've been there the whole time, but I would just notice different ones after looking at it longer and longer. Yeah, it's really so layered, neat. just like memory is, which is a lot of what her work is based on. It's really an it incredible is. piece. Yes, and you only have a few moments left right now on this piece, and it looks like we just had another bid come in at twenty. $200, Amazing. Carolyn Stennett. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Yes, That's so really wonderful. Will anybody outbid her? Again, we have just a few moments. I noticed your brother actually put in the first bid on this one. So, Sasha, this yep. worked last time, so maybe he'll do it again. Yeah. Somebody outbid you in these last few moments. Can you get in there and get this artwork? Or will it be Carolyn's or somebody else? Sasha, oh. I want to see this work when I come down for Thanksgiving. Let's go. <laughs> there you go. Carolyn oh. has the lead right now, though. She does. Yes, okay. I'm going to issue a Last oh. call right now. Oh, we've got some more action. Some late action. We have Lorena, Lorena Bravo, Bravo, who is our very first bidder on the dinner earlier in the week. She opened up our bidding way back when. It feels like a long time ago already. But we have her as the front runner here. We are going to call. Oh, Carolyn, I think, just jumped oh, over. Oh, she did. We yes. We have a little delay here. So if we're misspeaking, bear with us. But we believe that Carolyn is right now the top bidder. 
And remember, when, when this hammers, it is over, unlike the fund to need paddle raise, where you can continue to donate to that for yes. the next 48 hours or so. Yes. When we hammer these works, that is it. And, and we'll announce the winner in just a few moments. So we are going to have to close. Pat yeah. Bats here. Do we have any late action coming in? Yes, last call right now. Fair going, warning. Going once, going twice. Anybody else? Sold. Congratulations to the lucky winner who, again, we will announce your name in just a couple minutes. Next up, we have Will Dexter's amazing gl blown glass piece titled Aqua Clamshell. This incredible work is from 2019, and we start the bidding at $2,400. I see that we're already way beyond that. We'll get to, wow. the, to the bidding action in a minute, but find your bidding buttons. I will tell you while you look for those bidding buttons to beat out Greg Butts, who has the top bid right now, that Will uses dichroic glass in his work, which means, Melanie, that different colors can appear when viewed from different directions. So when we walked out there, you can see it really shift and flow with your own motion as you walk around it. Right. We were like bending down and leaning over, and it just looked so different from different angles. It was yeah, beautiful. It activates the piece. It would look incredible in your home. Will is the owner, co-owner of the prestigious Taylor Backus Gallery in Boyertown. So if that name sounds familiar, mm -hmm. he has a very fine gallery not far away from here. And interestingly, he studied originally marine biology at the University of Miami before becoming a full-time art maker. So that might explain this sort of aqu aquatic theme that runs through a lot of his work, including our aqua clamshell here. And we are up to $5,800 on this item. It is an incredible piece. It is quite large. It is stunning. It will be the center of anyone's collection, certainly a room. Glass is Will's, one of Will's favorite mediums because of its unique relationship and interaction with light, which is something you definitely get with this piece. Yes. And the craftsmanship of this piece is simply exceptional when you see it in person. It really is. I think every one of us who's here tonight on the crew, shout out to everybody, by the way, is doing an awesome job behind the scenes too. Um, but everybody said, the pictures don't do this justice. You have to see it in person. I mean, it is just beautiful and much bigger than you would think. And those colors, just absolutely incredible piece. And I think people at home, though, I think even without seeing it in person, or maybe they had a chance to this week, but they definitely know that. Again, the bidding is up to $5,800 right now. So get those bids in. Again, this one will close live in just a moment or two. Yep. It's always, you know, in this virtual age that we live in, it's always important to still try and come see the artwork in person. We have the auction items on view here, and we obviously have incredible artwork all around us. So come on out this summer. We're really excited to host you here. Let me tell you a little bit about Will, this amazing piece. Come, Dexter comes with a lot of accolades. His work has been exhibited, again, throughout the world in major museums. The National Museum of Modern Art in Kyoto, Japan, the Museum of American Glass, the Metropolitan Museum of Art in, uh, in New York. It doesn't get much bigger than that. The Glass Museum in Wertheim, Germany, the National Museum of Modern Art in Tokyo, so in Tokyo and Kyoto, mm -hmm. the Museum of the State of Rhode Island. He's in incredible collections, the High Museum of Art, which is Atlanta's foremost museum, the American Craft Museum, the Corning Museum of Glass, so right back to the source, the Philadelphia Museum of Art, and the Smithsonian. Will is in all these amazing collections. You could own a piece of his work as well right now. Absolutely, and it is quite the piece of work. Do we have any idea how long it took him to make this from blown glass? I don't know, but I've watched a lot of blowing glass. If you haven't had the opportunity, it is really mesmerizing. It takes a long time. It's real-time process. You have a chance to catch your mistakes because of that molten glass. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you're dealing with really hot temperatures, molten glass. There's a lot of, you know, really excitement. It'll get the adrenaline pumping. So I'm sure this took a long time. It just exhibits incredible care when you look at it. The, mm -hmm. the, the, you know, the time and the effort that went into shaping this piece. Dichroic glass is not easy to use. So clearly he's a master craftsman. He yeah. teaches at the Tyler School of Art and Design right near here in Philadelphia. So he's really an accomplished master craftsman. Absolutely. Again, this is going to be closing live in just a few moments here. We have quite the bidding war that's going on. So will you keep it going here? We just have a moment or two left. 
We have a good back and forth here with, between Ted Lyons and Greg Butts. Yeah. Ted, if you want this piece, we are running out of time. Aqua Clamshell is about to close. Fair warning on this item. We have to move it along. Okay, last call. Here we go. Ted, are you stepping in? Anyone else nope. stepping in? This is an incredible piece. It, it really, really is. is. Anybody have a beach house? This might look gorgeous in a beach house, I was thinking. Beach house, absolutely. Yeah. It'd be incredible. All right, last call, everybody. All right, here we go. Fair warning on this lot. Going once, going twice on Will Dexter's amazing. Oh, we have. Oh, they're going back and forth now, guys. Greg and Ted, who will it be? This is live action auction right here. <laughs> Since when I was just saying going once and going twice, we had Ted jump in, Greg leapfrogged him again. We're up to $6,800. Yeah. But we have to move on if this is gonna keep going. We're running out of time. <laughs> Where are we? All right. Oh, Our Greg back in the lead. Four hundred dollars wow. for this item. Incredible. All of this money goes to support seventy-six hundred dollars. <laughs> wow. I'm, I'm not going to close sure this He's making sure he's going to get this. I know. It's incredible. I Every know. single dollar goes to support our operations at this museum. Whether you're donating to the Fund and Need Paddle Raise initiatives, mm -hmm. technology and internships or buying one of these amazing works that these artists generously donated with the, out of their own pockets. This work can be yours. It's really incredible. Okay, we are gonna close this work. We are at $7,600. Greg Butts is the lead bid. Fair warning to Ted and everyone else out there. Going once, going twice, and sold. We will announce that winner in a moment, but thank you for incredible generosity and for continuing to bid. We're really so pleased. Yeah, and speaking of the winners of the Dinner for Eight, the Gorgeous Pearl Necklace, and the artworks by Derek Velasquez and Lydia Panis will also be announced after our next auction item. So make sure you get your final bids in now on those great pieces. Of course, it's definitely more fun when you outbid your friends. Hopefully Absolutely. you're still friends after that. <laughs> And now our final work in the auction. It's really an amazing museum quality drawing mm -hmm. by artist Kay Walking Stick. Kay's piece, Dancing to Rome 5, is a beautiful charcoal, ink, and gold acrylic on paper drawing. I am pleased to announce that we have an opening bid on this piece already. Michelle Stringer is the lead bidder for Dancing to Rome 5 at $13,000. The retail value of this work, just so you know, is north of $20,000. Wow. Do we have any other collectors out there interested in owning this stunning work, which be the centerpiece of any art collection? Mm -hmm. I'll tell you that Kay is one of the most important contemporary artists of her generation, and perhaps the most celebrated artist of Native American ancestry, whose work focuses on the landscape and specifically the relationship between Native people and the land. If this au auction item looks familiar to some of you out there, it's because Kay made this large, expressive charcoal drawing around the same time that she created the Allentown Art Museum's own Blame the Mountains 3, an important painting in our permanent collection that was gifted to us in 2011 and is currently on view in our Butts Gallery just behind us. Like our painting, this work is also inspired by a trip that Kay took in to Italy in the 1990s and based on the mountains that she saw during her sojourn there. She began incorporating figures into her landscapes around this time, which allowed her to explore more complex ideas and to use the human form as a vehicle to express a broader range of psychological conditions. It's really an incredible piece. This large drawing has a very similar energy to our painting, if, you've, if you know that work. And you may notice it's also a diptych, just like ours. This diptych construct, that sort of binary construct, that, that division, serves as a powerful metaphor for Kay, allowing to her to better explore and express the conflicts, dualities, and disparate forces that exist in everyone's lives. It is a format and a metaphor that she found to be particularly attractive to those who are bi biracial like herself. That's 
That's right. And the bidding is open now on this. Again, the bid currently is at $13,000 from Michelle Stringer. So would you like to own this piece of artwork? Now is your chance to bid. It is really a stunning piece. And the, the left side and the right side are so different, yet also kind of evoke the same emotions. It's really neat. Yeah, it's really incredible. She's been making artwork for over four decades. Wow. Early in her career, she would use abstract shapes that were drawn from the motifs of southwestern rugs and different materials. Mm -hmm. So her landscapes were really dynamic and colorful. But this work and the work in our collection, you can see she's starting to focus back in on the figure. This is a really important work at a, an important moment in her career. It's really, you know, a, a museum quality drawing. Michelle has the lead on this item. Kay is a member of the Cherokee Nation. Her career, as I mentioned, spans four decades. Her work just recently was the subject of a major large-scale retrospective that traveled the country from 2015 to 2018. Wow. I talked about you know, the solo and group shows that these artists are in, the permanent collections that the, their artwork is in, and it doesn't get much better than Kay's mm -hmm. uh, bio. Listen to some of these museums that she's shown her work in the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of the American Indian. She had a solo show there. Mm -hmm. The Edeljord Museum of American Indian and Western Art in Indianapolis, Indiana. The Heard Museum in Phoenix, Arizona. The Gilcrease Art Museum, the Kalamazoo Institute of Art, all solo exhibitions. She's shown her work at the Crystal Bridges Museum of American Art in Bentonville, Arkansas. The New Museum the Aldrich Museum in Ridgefield, Connecticut, right near where my uncles live, <laughs> the Peabody Essex Museum, the Minneapolis Institute of Art, I mean, the Library of Congress. Her work is, has been shown around the world in all the most important collections. They're in the permanent collections of the National Gallery of Art in DC. So you could own a piece of hers that is in the National Gallery, the Whitney Museum of American Art, an incredible museum in New York, the Metropolitan, the Denver Art Museum, the wow. Baltimore Museum of Art. I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a top list of all the major art museums around the country. The Philadelphia Museum of Art, Albright Knox Museum, Library of Congress, I mean, the National Gallery of Canada. It's, it's just a stellar list. This is a stellar piece. Michelle Stringer is about to take home an amazing piece. Does anyone else have room? in their collection for what would instantly be a centerpiece of any collection. It certainly would be. So we just have a moment left here before we close the bidding on this work of art, but it is absolutely gorgeous and would definitely, like you said, be a wonderful centerpiece. You said the one that you have here at the museum is a favorite. It so. is, absolutely. Yeah. It's been hanging for a while. We're going to continue to show it. She is such an important artist. It's such an accessible work. Mm -hmm. People can really enjoy it. You don't have to know all the background of her. You don't have to know any of that to come in and enjoy it and really make a connection with it. It's really incredible. It is. All right, and we're going to close that bidding here in just a moment. Would you like to outbid Michelle? Here is your chance. If not, going once, going twice and sold. Congratulations. We will be announcing the winners for all of our auctions in just a few moments. So congratulations and thank you all so much for your generous bidding tonight. Yes, thank you all for your incredibly generous support tonight. And now it's the moment we've all been waiting for. We're going to talk about the winners of these auction items. We are going to announce them from earlier in the program. We're just rounding that up right now. It's really incredible. I will just tell you before we get there a couple things I really wanted to talk about. Kay, she is the recipient of numerous honors and awards. And you know, when, she, when I approached her to, to donate a piece, she said, you know, Max, I'm gonna dig through my archives. I believe I have a drawing that relates to your painting at the Allentown Art Museum. So we are so pleased to have this item. We are so pleased that Derek and Danielle and Will and Pat and Scott and everyone, Roy Rover, I mean, everyone for donating. We are having such great success tonight. But Kay was the, has been elected to the American Academy of Arts and Sciences. She's received a Lee Krasner Award, the great artist from the middle of the century for lifetime achievement from the Pollock and Krasner Foundation. She and all of these artists are, are so incredible. We're so right. pleased to have their support. 
through their generous donations. We're so happy to have your support tonight. It's really been an incredible evening so far. It has. So what do you think of your first gala, Max? It's been great. I mean, exceptional circumstances, of course, but it's been really wonderful. I've already had the opportunity to meet so many people from our community, supporters of the Allentown Art Museum. And actually, you know what, this virtual format, I think we're all used to it by now after the year that we've had, but it's been really incredible. It allows us to reach more people than we have ever before. You know, this is free and open to all. You know, so you, people can tune in from around the world if they if they felt so inclined. But we're really happy to have the support of our community here tonight. Absolutely, and we're happy to have you in our community now, oh, Max. So welcome to you. the Lehigh Valley. Your wealth of knowledge <laughs> and information and art history. So oh, thank yes. you. It's really exciting to be here. Thank okay. you. All right. Oh, it looks like we have the Coming winners in hot, here. Hot there off we the go. Press. That's right. Okay, so we are ready to announce our winners. Congratulations to Judith Harris for winning the Dinner for Eight. Congratulations, Judith, that's <laughs> amazing. Greg Butts won the pearl necklace, that amazing Akoya pearl necklace. The winner of the Derek Velasquez paint piece, Untitled 282, is Teresa Johnson. And let's move on to Lydia Panas's Kumquats and Kiwi Berries, that amazing, stunning still life photograph. The winner of that is Nancy Ordarski. Thank you so much, Nancy. Absolutely. Now a shout out to all of our final winners for the bidding war for our remaining art items. We have for the Danielle Reedy piece, Isabella Sasha Weintraub. Got it. There you go. My brother came through. I he hope my sure nieces did. were really pressuring him. <laughs> nice job, Sasha. It's a great piece. Danielle's an amazing artist. Yeah, absolutely. It's beautiful. And uh, Greg Butts is the one who won Scott Shirk's piece, Trexler Game Preserve. So congratulations to Greg. For Pat Bat's piece, September in July, the winner of that one is Carol Stennett. Carolyn, excuse me, so congratulations, Carolyn, on that. Next up would be the winner for Will Dexter's Aqua Clamshell, and that would be Greg Butts as well. That got down to the wire there. He that snuck in the last bit. Back and so. forth. It really Greg was. came out on top. Yes. Greg's really has two incredible pieces tonight he for really his collection. Does. Yes, congratulations to him. And finally, for our final auction item of the evening was that K walking stick, um, Dancing to Rome 5, and that goes to Michelle Stringer. So congratulations to all of our bidders tonight. We appreciate all of your support, and it has truly been an incredible night and a huge success. We really, truly couldn't have done it without you. Absolutely, and we couldn't have made this happen without the support of our sponsors tonight. I would like to extend a special thank you to them for continuing to keep the arts alive in our community. And thank you to each and every one of you for attending and supporting our event tonight. Because of you, we are able to continue providing arts, education, and exciting programming to our members, visitors, and to everyone in our community. We've raised tens of thousands of dollars tonight, and it wouldn't have been possible without you. That's right. Remember that our fund to need bidding will continue through Monday. So if you didn't get a chance to donate tonight, please consider doing so over the next few days. And again, tell all of your friends about it. Let's also not forget that the Allentown Art Museum is always hosting fun and interactive events. So if you enjoyed tonight's show, be sure to check out our website to see how you can get involved. Becoming a member is a great first step. So once again, thank you so much for keeping the arts alive and contributing to a cause that continues to inspire, teach, transform, and engage our community. Have a wonderful evening, and thank you so much again. Have a great night. Good night.